And there goes the biggest shark I have ever seen shore diving at Palos Verdes. Finally, SoCal is a little bit better, more manageable for us shore divers out there. Um, I couldn't finish out the lobster season with a final dive or a final couple dives just because the conditions have been absolutely terrible for shore divers for the past month-ish. Um, winds have been really, really high along with that high surf, which just overall means you're not diving from shore, at least safely. Or is it, it's not even worth it, um, at least in my opinion. But anyway, PV, we're back and the surf conditions were about one to two feet. Wind was about four to five and the surge when I got there was not too great. Um, it looked medium high and once I got in the water, I soon confirmed that. Um, it was about medium, I would say, a solid medium in surge. Um, so overall, visibility in this dive was about eight to 10 feet. Um, but yeah, you'll see in this footage here that the dive overall, it was just good to be in the water, but I was targeting white sea bass. That was the goal. It is season and they are back or they should be back um, in March typically. All right guys, we're just at the spot. We're about to head out in PV. Uh, Walls look about a foot or so. Uh, I heard from some other divers that it's a little surgy at the bottom and the visibility is not that good. We'll take a look at that. Um, but let's get out there. Hopefully, we can get a white sea bass. See you in the water. So, the name of the game when hunting white sea bass, not that I've caught any, but the name of the game from what I hear is be quiet and be as um, stealthy as possible. So, my strategy here is to dive to the bottom and just sit and wait for them to come to you or look for them in passing. Um, the main reason I did this is because this is my first dive back in a while and I wasn't too confident in swimming around in, in stealth because I was afraid I'd be making some noise and because I haven't dove in a while, um, there, there was just a higher chance in my opinion. So um, I dive down here as you can see and of course in PV, you're not diving there unless you see a massive school of opal eyes. So here's a little nice school here. Um, I get very tempted because I haven't shot my gun in a long time uh, to line up and just take a bigger one and maybe do a little fish fry. Um, but you can see me uh, getting really tempted. I see a decent sized one, I'm lining up and uh, I changed my mind. So I'm like, it's not worth it. My worst fear is I, if I do take one of these and a white sea bass comes flying by. Um, so I resisted the urge, though I need, haven't shot my gun in a while, and I swim up and hopefully we can get a white sea bass. So in this clip here, you can see these smaller fish. They are some sort of bait fish. If you do know what they are, please put them in the comments below. I'd love to learn. From my research, I couldn't 100% confirm what they are. But the idea here is I'm just floating on top as quiet as possible. And I'm hoping um, maybe a white sea bass are stalking them or whatnot. So that's the plan here. But you can see the visibility is a little rough today. Um, again, about eight to 10 feet, I would say. So here you can see I'm practicing the same strategy I mentioned before. So sitting at the bottom, I'm trying to stay as flush to the floor as possible to hopefully blend in or not be noticed as much. I'm just looking around. I'm not trying to shake my head too much from what I hear. So really smooth movements if possible. I'm looking around, looking up to that mid kelp area because they can be cruising there um, from the research I've done. So I'm just quietly sitting here. So at this point, I'm needing some air, heading on up, and then boom, a huge six gill shark. I initially thought it was a soup fin because that's all I've seen in the area since, but this guy's a six gill shark. You could actually take one per day with no size limit, but yeah, it definitely startled me on the way up. So on the flip side, this is a soup fin shark, and the way you can tell is by the rear tail. Um, it's split into kind of like a two tier look. 
Um, I'm actually debating shooting this, but I had no dive buddies with me at the time, so I decided not to. But yes, you are allowed to take a Sufin shark, one per day, and as of this video, there is no minimum size limit. I know this is a controversial topic in terms of hunting sharks, but I just want to keep, get that information out there. You can fish them if you like, just follow the laws. So here's comparing the two sharks. The top is the six gill and the bottom is the soup fin. The top six gill, you can see that long rear tail and the soup fin on the bottom has kind of a two tier shape to it. That's an easy way you can tell the difference. And it's about wrapped it up for this dive. Thanks for watching Dive Spirit. See you on the next one.